Well, speaking of money, what better swindle than rock and roll? This is the man who managed the Yardbirds Japan Wham, Simon Napier Bell. Hi, Hi, Hi. So, Sai, um, are you basically out for money or are you out for art? Fun. Just fun. Just fun. You're, you're, are you typical rock and roll or are we going to have an interesting conversation? What's typical rock and roll? <laughs> <laughs> what does money mean to you? Let's, let's get heavy now. Fun. It just means you can do what you want when you want. Do you feel any responsibility to the public or? As much as they feel towards themselves, no more. Mm. So t tell us about, like, you're one of the very few last managers left who are alive, like Brian Epstein. They've all killed <laughs> <laughs> So what's you your favorite? You mean one of the old what's managers? What's your beauty you secret? You old, don't you? Mm. Beauty secret? Well, you have me in the makeup room for ten minutes. That's the You should have seen what walked in here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and that was her. <laughs> yes, okay. uh, the secret. The secret is uh, sex, drugs, and drink in the right proportion. All the other managers got them in the wrong proportion. You must get them in the right proportion. Mm. And what's the balance for you? 100% of all of them. Right. Is there anybody who's interesting that's a rock star? Really interesting as a human being? No, the, the no. main thing which is interesting... <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting is what they do with themselves, not what they are underneath. If they were interesting to start with, would they bother to change themselves into a rock star? I mean, they all make themselves. These kids, they, they go at 17, 18, they decide they want to be a rock star. They get in front of the bedroom mirror and they change themselves, you know put in contact lenses, thin themselves out, fatten themselves up, do exercises, whatever, change their voice. If they were happy with what was there to start with, they wouldn't do it, would they? Mm. And so what comes out might look good, but if you try to find out what's underneath, it's what there was to start with, and if they weren't happy with it, why should we be? But Mark Bolin, was he... Mark Bolin. Mo Bolin, He yeah. wore things like you, all those silver flash things. Yeah. yeah he His needed... earrings were a bit bigger than us. What was he like as a person? He got into it like everybody else, but he got out. It was rather sad, actually, because he got out of all, everything he was into and came back and was just making a huge comeback and was building himself up again and had a TV show and new records released. And then he killed himself in a car crash. So, what happens to rock stars when they die? Do you make more money or well, less money? Well, the thing, the funny thing about Mark is he always said to me, I want to die in a car crash. In fact, his hero was James Dean. I was and say. he said to me, when I first started imagining him, he said, one day I want to die in a car crash. Cool. I, and, how, I and, hope you didn't have a long contract. And moreover, um, <laughs> it ran out long before. <laughs> and moreover, he said, uh, um, a Porsche wouldn't be right for me because I'm just a little chap. A Mini would be better. That's what happened, but he said it ten years earlier. Really? Mm. Do rock stars make more money after they're dead? Not personally, but does somebody, do Janis Joplin's records go up? No, Like I don't, Judy Garland, you know what I mean. There's not many cases. I mean, you've got to be a pretty major rock star actually to sell a lot of records after you die or because you die. I mean, there's, there's always this sort of classic Hollywood film plot of the guy who, who didn't quite make it and then he died and so they sell lots of records. It's never happened, actually. Only major stars go on selling records after they die. I think Jim Reeves may have sold more records after he died than before. But he sold a lot before as well. I just want to introduce you now to somebody who's also in your business, mm -hmm. coincidentally. Um, would you please welcome the godfather of punk, Malcolm McLaren. Thanks for being on the show. Um, no, no. Yeah. I can call you that. Yeah, baby. Um, no. <laughs> I'm rock and roll now. I'm cooking. Now, you're, you're living in L.A., the La Lands. Well, um, have you had to modify your style at all, or are you just, you know, cruising along and they have to accept it? Oh dear, I Time don't is know. Money. You know, lost hands. Of it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. How to <laughs> <laughs> can I sit over here? Can I sit over here? I don't no. know how to answer that. All right, we'll just we'll just well. keep going till we find a topic we can oh. land on in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Like money seemed to arouse you in the past. Money? Yeah. I don't know anything about money. People keep saying that. Yeah, I, but you I make don't... money in America. Do you? That's why you went. I'm going to tell you about Malcolm now. Well, uh, you do and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, but you spend it. You know. Right. Very hard to hold on to it, particularly if you're, you know, on some kind of adventure or whatever. Are you on an adventure? Are you on holiday on my show? <laughs> Are you kind of like, have you lost your uh, rebellious side of you? No. I don't know what you do out there. I mean, what do you do? Out there? Yeah. In L.A.? Yeah. A lot of bloody meetings, dear. Mm. Tremendous amount of meetings. A lot meetings. of lunches. I don't know what I do out there. To <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, how do you That's live there? How really. can you stand there? You don't live knowing anything. You just see the different colours of the paint and that sort of... 
Milk, what do you want out of life? I don't know. I think that um, what I want... Oh, just to keep having an idea, you know? Just have a good idea. What has L.A. done to you? <laughs> Staying up at home. There's a movie on. You can go to sleep now. You've done your bed. Thanks a lot. Good night.